First of all, how many of you have been delivered or set free of something? Anybody been delivered or set free? How many of you have had your life spared and you know it was nothing but the grace of God? Just look around the room. It was the grace of God that spared our lives. How can we keep silent about the good news? There's so many people, I mean, especially during this holiday season, we hear of so many people who are losing their lives or losing loved ones, but you're still here by the grace of God. So because you're still here, let's not miss this opportunity to share with someone before they leave this place that there is good news. Because for those who don't have the gospel, unfortunately, we have some very terrible news to share with you, that you will live a life of eternity, of, of eternity in damnation. We don't hear a lot about it. People don't talk about it like they used to, but it's the truth. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen, that he spared our lives and he gave us another chance. Just immediately, I, I just think about one, one day when I was in, in college days, you know, that's when you, you, know, you don't think straight all the time. I'm driving down the street and my mom didn't know anything about it. I shared with her some years later, but I'm riding and a friend is driving and you know how people want to go around traffic. We're going, leaving to Larry and they go around traffic. We're going head on into traffic into another car. And it was by the grace of God that the other person swerved off the road and started spinning them around in the dirt that I'm here today. And I remember when I saw the car coming toward me, all I could do, I couldn't say anything. I lift both hands up. I was pressing on the ceiling, but I, I didn't know I was giving God the praise. I said, all I could say was Jesus, Jesus. And I just thank God for sparing my life. You know, so many times God is so good to us and we take him for granted. And we say, oh God, we're so grateful at that time. But then as time goes on, we become desensitized and we just kind of forget about it. And you know, well, that was, that was back then. But no, God spared my life. He spared, I saw the hands all over the building. He spared our lives. He's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a righteous God. He's a holy God. He's a good God. Amen, and we can't do anything but give him the praise. Just quick, I just feel a testimony coming up in my spirit. When I was, before I was born, I just want to share with you quickly just how good he's been to me because there's some things that pastor's going to share that I'm doing that I'm seeding in this ministry. And some people say, that don't make sense. Why would you do something like that? You crazy. Before my mother knew that I was in her womb, they actually told her that I was a tumor. As a matter of fact, the doctor set up the appointment and he said, okay, we have the surgery prepared. And she was prepared to go into surgery to remove this tumor that was actually me. And before I got, to, before she got to the doctor, you'll never guess what happened. The doctor died. Her uh, sister-in-law told her to get a second opinion. She went to a doctor, he said, what do you want, a girl or a boy? That's the beginning of my testimony. The enemy did not want us to be here because he knew, he knew that even not just today, but not just the souls that have been saved, the lives have been changed, but there's so much more to come. God knows it. The Satan knew it and he tried to take me out. Then when I got here, I got double pneumonia twice. Where back then we had to stay in a bubble and I heard all stories about it, my brothers and everybody crying because they didn't think I'd make it. Over and over. Then I had not that long ago had brain surgery. They told me if I had not went halfway through the surgery, they told my husband, if your wife had not come in at this time, she would have been, she was in the beginning stages of paralysis because we already saw her brain tonsils stop pulsating. But by the grace of God, I could lift my hands. I could praise, I could run around this building and say, God, I give you the glory. I worship you today. Hallelujah, you are a good God. And I will give you all the praise all the days of my life. I surrender my life to you, oh God. And everything that's mine, God, belongs to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Get out of selfishness. Father God, we repent today, Father God, of forgetting what you've done for me. Father God, even just a little bit of testimony, there's testimonies out there in these seats that you said, if you pass me the mic, you would not believe what God delivered me from. You would not believe what I've come through. I shouldn't be here today, but hallelujah. By the grace of God, I'm still standing. Hallelujah, we repent. Oh, Father God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, if we've ever lost sight of the goodness of how wonderful, how merciful, how glorious, 
how awesome, how awesome of a God you are, God. And we give you all the praise. We will not hold back, Father God, and we will share the gospel with every living creature. Father God, we will not walk past another person who is in need and not have compassion. Not have compassion. Jesus had compassion. You know the difference between compassion and concern? Jesus had compassion. Compassion meant he acted on it. There was something that he had to do about it. He didn't just see someone hungry and say, oh, that's messed up. Oh, wow, that's too bad. But he said, I got to do something about it. I got to do something about it. Let's get a do in our spirit. Amen. Amen. Father God, we love you on the day. Oh, hallelujah. Again, I was just talking about the way of the master, but we've got to share the gospel. And again, if you don't feel equipped, this is an opportunity for you to say, I can actually learn how to share. I don't have to be a preacher or a teacher, but I can share the good news. I can see a life change. I can see someone set free and say, you know what? I don't have to live this life that I'm living anymore. I, I could be broken from these chains of bondage in my mind. I can live for God. I can live a holy life, amen. So I encourage you, if you're interested in that class, December 12th, Please sign up in the lobby area and make sure you get connected. Get filled with the word so you can share the gospel with every living creature.